It's a job application. <laughs> I used to be a scary child back in my day. Scary to look at and just a scaredy cat in general. Examples are, I would run away as fast as I can to my room after turning off the lights. Legit piss myself in my bed cause I was too scared to go to the bathroom at night cause what if a demon tries to get me? I'm not taking no chances. Some of this childhood fear still goes on me to this day. Like, I still can't sleep without some kind of light source in the room, whether that be the TV or street lights or something. Like, how do people sleep in the pitch dark? You can't see the demons in the corner of the room in the pitch black. So how do you sleep in the dark? You gotta be real crazy to sleep like that. But going back to me being a child, I was a coward. And I also watched a lot of scary things to warrant this behavior. I remember watching the end of The Exorcist and that scared the black off of me. Like literally, I'm Mexican now. Every time I saw the goosebumps opening, it gave me nightmares. Like that dog just got possessed! And that doll episode? How is that allowed on TV? Even someone like Mike Tyson could get scared from that. But the scariest thing I watched as a kid was that Return to Slab episode of Courage to Cowley Dog. My god, that episode had my cheeks quivering! Like, man, just look at this! Return the slab. What? Return the slab. Oh, suffer my curse. Imagine seeing that as a six, seven year old kid. That, that sticks with you. And even though that horrified the tidy whiteies off of me, I feel like that was where my interest of scary stuff started. And as I grew a bit older, in middle school, I started watching all this scary information content. You know, Matthew Centoro, Mr. Nightmare, Danger Dolan, and a whole bunch of stuff like that. And I was watching on the daily. I was so immersed in these scary videos cause I liked getting scared. I don't know, maybe I'm a psychopath, but it was interesting to listen to these scary facts and stories. But now as a 19 year old adult, I'm a kid forever. I don't find basically anything no longer scary anymore in media that is. Nothing is scary anymore, but I'll go on more about that later. For now, I want to talk about scary stuff from back in my middle school days and why I found them scary in the first place. Back then, before icebergs, there were top 15 chills type videos. I was addicted to these scary info YouTube videos like it was black tar heroin. Watching scary 911 calls and most likely fake horror stories was a daily occurrence for me. You know if they get the story from Reddit or if they say it's a deep web story, those stories will be faker than Iggy Azalea's ass. But me back then, and me now, would eat that up, fake or not, cause the stories were scary. Like Llama Arts and Mr. Nightmare story times used to scare the hell out of me. They made me so afraid of the deep web and I would stay far away from it. Mainly cause I didn't want my computer to get a million different kind of STD viruses. But also, I didn't want someone watching me through my screen. I was enamored by those videos. But the ones that caught my interest the most were the weirdest videos you could find on YouTube and creepypastas. I loved creepypastas. I couldn't get enough of them. Squidward Treats Himself and Ben Breathing were big parts of my childhood trauma. The creepiness of these stories was just so unnerving to me cause I ain't never heard anything like these stories in my life. Some of these stories sounded so realistically scary that I thought half of these creepypastas were based on true stories. Like the Russian sleep experiment and Gateway of the Mind scared the dookie out of me. Literally, I could feel the doodle leaking against my thighs. Lavender Town, abandoned by Disney, the expressionless Candle Cove would have me tweak into a horrifying extent. As a kid, listening to Lavender Town would scare me so much that after listening, I thought someone would just Come bust down my door! And those cursed YouTube videos would be even worse. Oh my goodness. Obey the walrus and I feel fantastic would scare me to tears, bro. Cause videos like those, I, I legit would think they're cursed and I would die in seven days like the ring after watching them. These are the videos that would keep me up at night, leaving me in a cold sweat. But the main videos that would scare me the most were the Sunshine Girl videos. Now if you don't remember or know who this is, The Haunting of Sunshine Girl was this channel that used to post these scary ghost sighting videos. And she also had this paranormal activity series where she would film the ghost sightings of her supposed haunted house. Now obviously these videos are fake and all, but me as a kid, I was eating this up! Like look at this! That's a real ghost! Th that's a real ghost in her kitchen! In her kitchen! What are you doing? Face? Faces aren't supposed to look like that! And she disappeared! This is 
is as real as you can get. Now, I 100% doubt she made these videos to be perceived as real because, well, there's literally seasons of it. But me being a dumb kid, I believed everything that was shot in found footage style. I even remember believing the Smosh Easy Bake Elven skit was real for a bit. I was a very gullible kid that had a fascination of being scared and of horror topics, and I still do to this day. But it's really hard to be a fan of this genre nowadays because nothing is new and nothing is scary. Now, we're in the modern day, and I felt when I was a kid, I was engrossed with all these scary stuff because it was all new to me, stuff I ain't never heard before. But today, there are no new topics of horror to discuss other than these TikTok horror stories. People have been talking about the same stuff for years, like how many times do I have to hear about Don't Hug Me I'm Scared and Blank Room Soup being scary? They're not scary! In fact, I used to love Don't Hug Me I'm Scared as a kid. The story and the hidden messages used to intrigue me so much, I used to watch MatPat theories of it. And not to mention the songs were bangers, like I used to get sturdy to the clock song. And Blank Room Soup is fake. Let's just get this over with. It's fake, bro. There's four different scary videos of it, and that alone should indicate that it's an ARG. Can we stop talking about these now? For the love of Allah, I be seeing these two videos pop up in every iceberg video. Sometimes them even be near the bottom, being at level four or five. Like, why is this even in the video? And they be hyping it up like it's the scariest thing you'll ever see. Like, don't hug me, I'm scared. Don't Hug Me I'm Scared is a video series on YouTube that used to scare the living socks off of kids living in America and Iraq. The series starred puppets doing weird things, so weird that it makes you think the puppets are real people in need of help. Rumor has it that if you watch the series three times, your father leaves you. Moving on to the bottom of the iceberg, Spongebob, the lost episode. Like, what the hell is this guy talking about? Who above the age of five finds this scary? Half of these horror iceberg videos are the biggest waste of time because they just be copy and paste of each other with maybe something being in a different place this time. Like none of this is new or scary. Hearing about a fake band episode of the Rugrats isn't scary. Come to think of it, most creepypastas are pretty much just fan fiction. Jeff the Killer was such a stupid one too, but it had me shivering my timbers when I first heard it. Maybe it's just me, maybe I'm growing up, but combined with no new horror content, Horror movies aren't scary anymore, like none of them. I honestly don't remember the last time I was scared of a horror movie recently. I'm not gonna go too deep in horror movies cause I lowkey wanna make a video on them. So I'm just gonna say, jump scares aren't scary. Or at least it's not a real form of scary. I'm mainly talking about the forced jump scares. Forced jump scares are the ones that go off when nothing even remotely scary is happening. Like a scene like this could be happening and then a jump scare happens for no reason. Hi mom, good morning. Good morning, sweetie. How was your sleep? It was fine, I guess. Uh, mom, do you know where the cookies are? What are you talking about, sweetie? The cookies are right there on the counter. <coughs> yeah, something like that. Outside of all the stuff I've spoken about this whole video, there's only one form of media that continues to consistently scare me to this day. Horror games. Not analog horror games, that shit is goofy. Horror video games are the only thing that be scaring me nowadays. And the reason why I think that's the case is cause scary video games are way more immersive than any other form of horror because you're in the experience yourself. Besides those haunted houses that make you sign a waiver before you go in, I'm never going to those things. They literally torture you. When playing a horror game, as soon as it starts, you're already on edge. Because in almost every horror game, something is chasing after you as soon as you hit the start button. Then you gotta think quick. You have to accomplish the objective as fast as possible before this person or thing kills you. That's why I find horror games scary. Even in the low quality ones like Granny, I would still get scared. Even though Granny looks like garbage, but best believe when I see her when playing it, 
Oh, I'm freaking out! Like, she actually in my house! And I only feel this towards horror games. And I might be a pussy for thinking this, but when I play a horror game, I feel as if someone is actually chasing me. Because I'm so immersed in the game when playing it. When I'm playing Five Nights at Freddy's, I'm checking the cameras in real life too! I can only feel this level of immersion on roller coasters too since I'm literally spinning around 100 feet in the air. But the scariest one I've been on is specifically that 4D SpongeBob ride at Universal Studios. Why was that so scary? The pirate literally grabs you and throws you underwater. And then by the end of it, Plankton is trying to kill you. How is this for kids? And since it was 4D, water would be squirted on you and the seats would shake and it was so loud in there. Oh my god, this is honestly the scariest roller coaster I've ever been on. And I'm not even lying. You know those videos with those crazy insane roller coasters that would legit give you scoliosis? That's like a baby horse spinny ride compared to the SpongeBob ride at Universal Studios. That's the two things that scare me nowadays. Horror games and sometimes roller coasters. And I guess hell too, but that's only second to Spongebob. Of course I'm scared of more stuff than that, but I'm mostly talking about stuff in entertainment that's supposed to scare you. Stuff that scare me in real life could be an entirely different video. But stuff I talked about in this video, creepypastas, horror movies, Spongebob, were all scary to me at one point. But now growing older, they mostly seem tame. And since this is about scary stuff, I want to end this on a story on one of the scariest experiences that had ever happened to me in my life. Now before I tell it, this is a real thing I experienced back in like late elementary or early middle school, one of the two, and I was not dreaming. This was not a dream. I was fully awake. It was a summer night like any other. Me and my brother shared a room with each other at this time. I slept in a bunk bed so the room would have more space. Everyone was asleep. I woke up in a hot sweat in the middle of the night. This happens to me a lot during the summertime, so it wasn't that out of the ordinary. Usually I go right back to sleep within the next minute or two. But I also lift my back and turn my head to look at the rest of the room, just to see and hear if anyone else was awake. But when I looked this time around, I saw something very strange. I turned my head and looked down at my room from my bunk bed, and I saw my dark room being lit up by candles that was surrounding the big chair in the middle of the room. I was very confused because my brothers were asleep, so why were the candles lit in the middle of the room? Then at the doorway of my room, someone slowly entered, and I was in utter terror. A long black-haired girl in a white dress slowly entered my room. She basically looked identical to the girl from the ring. She walked slowly inside my room, heading towards the front of the candlelit chair. When reaching the front of the chair, she kneeled down slowly and went into a prayer position. I turned around quickly and went under my covers, sweating profusely, hoping she didn't see me. And as I hide under my covers, I remember I started to hear whispers. I couldn't understand it whatsoever. I was so afraid that I hid under my hot covers, not showing an inch of skin, sweating for what felt like an hour, too scared to go to sleep. The whispering soon stopped, but I was still too scared to go to sleep or leave my covers. I eventually ran out of steam and I forced myself to go to sleep, hoping she was gone. I closed my eyes and hoped for the best. The next morning I woke up. I instantly turned around to get out of my covers to see if anything from last night was still there. Nothing. No candles and no girl. It was like if they were never really there. But that night spooked me so much, I didn't tell any of my family about it until two years later when I told my mom. She just said I had a bad dream. But it wasn't a dream. I was awake the entire time. Now, as I get older, I'm starting to think maybe I was hallucinating. You know how when you first wake up you see things like thinking a coat in your closet is a person? But I know I wasn't dreaming. And I also stared at the girl and the candles for a long enough time that it sometimes makes me doubt I was hallucinating. I don't know though. I'm kind of weirded out. Leave a comment of what you think I saw that night. Or if you have any similar experiences like I did. I'm very curious to read them. Also follow the stuff in the description. And in conclusion, push these niggas off me like, push these bitches off me like, push these niggas off me like, push these